الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد respected viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to this new lesson of the explanation of the book of Salat in today's lesson we will learn about Salat al-Marid or the prayer of the sick person the sick person falls into the category of Ahlul Adhar the exempted people and as we learned from the previous lessons, the exempted people are the traveler, the sick person, and the person in fear. Because Islam is a religion full of mercy, Allah Azza wa has given some consciousness to the sick person so that he can perform his prayer in an easy manner. The first point we are going to cover in this lesson is about combining the prayers for the sick person. Difficulty caused by sickness is one of the excuses which make it permissible to join prayers. So the sick person may join Al-Dhuhr and Al-Asr, Al-Maghrib and Al-Isha at the time of the earlier or the later prayer, depending on what is easier for him. It should be noted that the sick person for whom it is permissible to join prayers should offer each prayer in full without shortening it because shortening the prayers is only permitted for the traveler Sheikh Islam bin Taymiyyah may Allah have mercy on him said the reason for shortening prayers is travel and it is not permitted when one is not traveling when it comes to the purification of the sick person Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz may Allah have mercy on him said if the illness is serious and the sick person fears to use the water meaning that using water will delay his recovery or increase his pain or cause infection then it is allowed for him to make tayammum but if the water will not cause him any harm then it is not allowed for him to make tayammum and he must use the water so how do we make tayammum the following video shows us the proper way to make tayammum If a person is suffering from an illness which makes him unable to move and finds no one to bring him water, then it is permissible for him to perform tayammum. If a person is suffering from a wound or fracture or from an illness which can be aggravated by using water, it is also permissible for him to perform tayammum. A person who is sick and who is in a place in which he cannot find water or dust or anyone to bring him either of them at the time he may pray at whatever condition he is in and he is not allowed to delay the prayer and this leads us to talk about the brothers and the sisters who are suffering in the hospitals may Allah grant them quick recovery and bless them with health anytime a person is in the hospital and cannot perform wudu then he is allowed to perform taimu if he cannot perform taimu because he cannot move from his bed for example or there is a najasa that is attached to him such as urine for example let him not worry about this and he should have the niyyah the intention for the tahara for purification and pray at whatever condition he is in in order to perform taymum we need a sa'id a tayyib meaning we need something natural and pure and has dust all right now to perform the tayammum you strike the ground with both hands blow the dust from your hands and then wipe your face and hands one time and that is a tayammum let's take a look at the video The sick person must pray standing as much as he can. If he cannot pray standing, then it is permissible for him to sit. And if he is unable to sit, he can pray lying on his back, with his feet facing the Qibla. If he cannot even face the Qibla, if he is unable to face the Qibla, then let him pray at whatever condition he is in. If the sick person 
cannot bow or prostrate he can just lean forward for them and he should lean lower for prostration than bowing now if the sick person cannot move his back then he can tilt his head forward and pray but the sick person cannot stop praying he must pray because the condition of prayer is al-aql, sanity, not al-siha, health. So as long as a person has a aql, as long as a person is sane, then he must pray. With this we come to the end of this lesson. I ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to make us among those who listen to the word and follow the best of it. Wa akhir da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.